back with you. Today I'd like to go over a dynamics problem. This is one my students are working on right now. So what I've got right now is a, is a solid disk that's rolling down a ramp with an angle of 25 degrees. Okay? And so what we're trying to find out is what's the acceleration of this disk? Now this is a little bit different than the translational problems we've been working with because this disk now has mass, but it's also got mass moment of inertia. So if you think of mass as being resistance to linear acceleration, mass moment of inertia is resistance to angular acceleration. And we're, the, the nice part about this is even though it's kind of a new concept, it acts just like every other dynamics problem we've ever done. We're going to go uh, through a procedure like we did before. We have given, find, solution is next here. So put that up here. And what's the thing we do first when we're solving most dynamic problems? Draw a free body diagram. So that's what we're going to do right now. So start by drawing a free body diagram. Free body. Yeah, let's try this one more time. I can't even spell FBD now. FBD. That's much better. Okay, so what I've got, let's draw this circle. It's kind of an egg, but there you go. Now I can do better. Yeah, that's roughly circular. Like I said, it'll have to do. And so we've got from the center of the, of the disc, we've got weight coming down. We've got friction coming off along the ramp. Now, we've said no slipping here, so the friction's going to be whatever it needs to be. It's not important here. We don't need to know mu. We just need to know that mu is high enough that this thing isn't going to slip. So we've got that. Let's see, what else is going on here? We've got acceleration going that way. Let's put this over here. The assumed acceleration is down to the right. So that's A sub X, right? And I've also got rotational acceleration. Well, rotational acceleration is clockwise, right? There's our rotational acceleration. That's going to be alpha, right? Now, I kind of hinted at it here. We have A sub X. We need a coordinate system. And typically, unless you have a pretty good reason, you're going to want the coordinate system. That's a bad place for it. We want the coordinate system to match the ramp. So here's what I'm going to do. I'll get my out of your way here in a second. X, Y, and moment. Okay, so there's my coordinate system. X in that way, Y that way, and the moment, the positive moment, is going to be counterclockwise. All right, so I've got, let's see, weight, friction force. Now, because I've got acceleration going that way, I can have the inertial force going this way. Okay, now, just a, a quick reminder of what inertial force is. There is. Strictly speaking, there is no such thing as an inertial force. If I write the equation F equals MA, the stuff on the left side, that's just the force, or there's usually the sum of forces, there's more than one. This on the right hand side, is that a force? No. But the product of M and A has the units of force. I can push it around like a force. I can draw it on my diagram like a force. So even though it's not strictly speaking a force, I'm going to call this inertial force. Now go ask a physicist. Is there such a thing as inertial force? Absolutely not. I've tried. I tried this last week with a physicist and he kind of went, Ooh, no, there's no such thing. He's right. But I'm not a physicist. I'm an engineer. I can do this and get away with it. And I don't seem to have any existential problems with doing it. So, let me break the weight down into the y component and the x component. All right, so I've got an inertial force, y and x components of weight, the friction force. There's one more thing I don't have on here, and that is inertial moment. There's an inertial force, there's an inertial moment. So acceleration is clockwise, inertial moment must be counterclockwise. Because inertial forces, inertial moments always act in the opposite direction of acceleration. All right. So I've got that all taken care of. There's my free body diagram. And I'm going to get rid of some stuff here because I need this space over here. So we know that's the, uh, uh, actually I better leave that there. I'm going to get rid of this for right now. So that's step one. We drew the free body diagram. Step two, now let's write out some equations. Well, we can write out two equations. One of them is we can sum the forces in the x direction. We're going to have that friction force in there. Now, there's no reason we can't solve for it, but we don't need it. The problem doesn't ask for it. There's really no need to find friction force in this problem. So having done this a few times, I found out that if you sum the, force, the moments first, 
you can write one single equation that gives you everything you need. So I'm going to write the sum of the moments equals zero. Now, sum of the moments equals zero because we have this inertial moment in here. All right. Just for just as a reminder, m i equals i alpha. Well, that's the right side of Newton's law when we write that equation down. So because we've got this drawn here as an inertial moment, we've already got Newton's law taken care of. And this summing the moments equals zero makes it look a lot like statics, even though it's dynamics. And this is what we call an equation of dynamic equilibrium. So let's see if we can do this. Now I need to also, what point about which am I going to take the moments? Well, I can pick anything I want. Center might work, this might work, but again, I don't want to know what friction force is. I don't want to have to figure that out just to throw it away. So I'm going to put the contact point right there, and I'll call that point C. That's the point about which we're going to calculate the moments, and you'll see why here in a second. So moments about C equal, all right, let's start working this out. There's W sub Y and F uh, friction force don't have any moments because they go right through C. Now. Because I've gotten this broken down into its components, I really don't need W anymore. In fact, that may be confusing. So let me take that out. I've got everything pointed along the axes now. So the, the friction of the inertial force multiplied by the radius is going to give me a clockwise moment or counterclockwise moment, positive moment. So I can say R F sub I plus M sub I minus one more thing here, minus R W X. And all that has to equal zero. Alrighty, so we're in good shape. Oh, we should put a summation there. All we got to do is now start expanding that out, and we're going to get the answer. Okay, so R, now the, the inertial force right there is mass times acceleration. So it's M acceleration, and this is the X direction we're going. So I'll write A sub X plus MI. Well, that's uh, mass moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. Well, for this, mass moment of inertia is one half, am I in the frame? Ooh, just barely, all right. M R squared times alpha. That's how we're going to write the mass moment of inertia. That's the expression. If you go look this up, it's in the book somewhere. So I'm going to write one half M R squared alpha minus R M G and let's see, Wx is W sine theta, and mg equals W, so WRMG sine theta, and that all equals zero. All right, so far so good, but there's one problem here. I've got A sub X there and alpha there. Ugh, I've got two unknowns in one equation. I need another equation. Well, here's the other equation. I know that the acceleration in the X direction equals R alpha. That's a straight out of the conversion between uh, polar, or, yeah, polar coordinates and uh, rectangular coordinates. So that's, that's almost an identity, I suppose. So we, we get from there, alpha equals a sub x over r. All I got to do now is substitute this into there, and I'll have one equation with one unknown. Watch this. So I have r m a x, it's not a very good r, um, plus one half m r squared. Once again, I'll get out of your way here in a second. Just let me write this down. Minus r m g sine theta equals zero. All right. Now I'm in business. What's inside that box there? Solve that for a sub x, and you're going to get the acceleration. So what I'm going to do here is we don't need this stuff anymore. Let me erase this. Normally you'd start a new sheet of paper, but I can't do that with my whiteboard. All right, so let's let's expand that out a little bit, or, or simplify it perhaps. Now, before we go too far with this, I can't help noticing that m appears in every term. Well, if that's the case, I can divide through by m. So divide, 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 zero. Okay, so we get rid of m that way. Turns out r also appears in every term. So let's uh, appears twice there. Let's do this. Get rid of those r's. That is just r to the first power instead of the second power. r in the denominator cancels out. But I've still got an r in every term, so I can get rid of it there, there, there. What I've done is divide through by r. When you do that, let's go back up here. What I now get is a sub x plus 
a sub x over 2 minus g sine theta equals 0. Holy smokes, that is really simple. And look what doesn't appear in there. Mass doesn't appear in there. R doesn't appear in there. Who knew? Okay, so if we simplify this down some more, we'll get 3 over 2 a sub x equals g sine theta, or a sub x equals 2 over 3 g sine theta. Man, that's simple. So it's 2 over 3 times 9.81 times sine of 25 degrees. Work that out, not too hard to do, and you're going to get 2.764 radians, I'm sorry, meters per second, not radians, meters per second squared. And so there's, there's the acceleration. Now this is acceleration in a straight line in linear terms. If you want the rotational acceleration, we can still do that. We know that alpha equals a sub x over r. Now my radius is half a meter, so what I'm going to get here is basically double that answer. So I get 2.765 meters per second squared divided by one half meter. And we're going to get double that answer, so we're going to get 5.528 radians per second squared. There's my other answer. Okay, so that's it. That was actually not that hard, and the nice part about it is it fits exactly the pattern we've had in the past. Write down your given, what you got to find, draw a free body diagram, write out your equations of equilibrium, solve those equations. The process never changes, even though we've got this new kind of rotational problem. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.